Hi everyone, this is Miss Nguyen and I'm going to teach you about directional terms. Okay, so what are directional terms? Directional terms are special terms we use to specifically refer to parts of the body relative to another other body part or organ. Okay, so why is it critical that we have a common language and terminology for comparing parts of the body and referring to parts of the body? Well, as you can see in these pictures here, if you mess up, you will, if you are medical professionals, potentially cause some lifelong damage. In fact, uh, it's a little bit scary, but um, surgeons sometimes cut up and do surgery on the wrong part of the body. Nowadays, this is an increasingly rare phenomenon, thanks to checklists that surgeons are required to do like two or three times the entire team goes through and goes through a checklist and double checks and triple checks that they're cutting they're cutting the wrong the right thing. And in fact, you can see right here, it's really common practice that you're getting surgery on an arm or a leg that on the second arm or leg, they put a symbol there so they know that they aren't going to cut the wrong thing. So it's like redundancy after redundancy because doctors get really busy and hospitals get really busy and sometimes mess ups can happen but if you go through these checklists and make sure everyone is using the common language and everyone's triple checking each other's works you're going to minimize the um the potential um, mistakes that you may make in a hospital setting okay so today we're going to go over some terms directional terms that are important and we're going to also learn about a special position that is um that is used to uh, provide some commonality in terms of reference for the body parts. In addition to that, we're gonna go over um, some key mistakes I've seen year to year between um, that students have made in terms of the directional terms. And last but not least, um, there are some terms that are used differently between humans and animals that are on four legs, okay? Because they can't share the same positions humans do because they're on all four legs. <laughs> so. Anyways, these are the terms that you should be familiar with by the end of this lesson. Obviously, though, you're going to need more practice to really get them down. Okay, so what is the anatomical position? So, the anatomical position is a standard human body position where a person stands upright facing forward, and then they hold out their arms at a, at a like roughly 45 degree angle so that their thumbs are pointing out. Okay? and their palms are facing forward. So you should try doing that. Try replicating this position here. So a lot of our terminology is in reference to the person, the patient, imagining and superimposing this patient in this position. All right, so when we're talking face forward, we're talking about all the, all the, all the organs that are on like the side of the person's body that is facing forward in the anatomical position. Okay, things like that. So it helps give us a common terminology to use when referencing something. Now, the second thing you might notice is left and right. Now, a lot of students freak out at this point and they go, wait, but why did you understand left on my right? Well, it, it, I don't care about the doctor. I care about the patient. So if this person in the picture here is the patient, what is that person's left? What is that person's right? And you, as a doctor or nurse, would identify the left to be on this side and the right to be on this side. That's an example of anatomical position according to the patient that's standing in the position, not you, not the way you reference things with your vision. All right. Now, another thing about the anatomical position is their comparison terms. So you don't say your no, your eyes are your eyes are anterior to the front, okay? So anterior means in the front facing, so or more towards the front. So my eyes are anterior. Anterior to what, right? Because technically, if I just say my eyes are anterior, that's actually meaningless because my nose is actually more forward than my eyes. So my eyes aren't anterior to my nose, but my eyes are anterior or in the front of, facing front of my brain. So my eyes are anterior to my brain. So it's a comparison terms. All these directional terms are comparison terms, so you're using them in reference to something else. Sometimes that might be the midline, which we'll go over later, 
but you need it to be a reference to a different position or a different body part for you to identify what where something is located. So for example, my left lung, so my lung on this side of the body here is on top of and to the side of, so that means superior and lateral to my stomach, but if I compared it, um, sorry, this note is a little incomplete, but if I compared it to my left shoulder, it's actually, which is over here, it's actually more towards the middle and below my shoulder. So my left lung is inferior and medial. We'll learn these terms later to that left shoulder. So whatever you're doing one organ, it has to be compared to a different organ or a different body position. Taking this to a sadder side, right? Um, in high school, I was like an A minus student. So I was... I was doing better than one of my cousins, but I was always below and not as good as my sister. So, right, your position is always kind of relative to something else. That's the same thing when we're using directional terms. So let's go over some terminology, and I'm going to kind of sketch it on this image over here. And um, later on, I'm going to do a sketch on a side view. Okay, so the left and right of this person. So left and right is going to be hard to draw on a side view of a person, but it is a lot easier to draw on a front view of a person, someone in an anatomical position. So in this case, the left side, so you should draw kind of a stick figure human in your on your notes and then label the left over here, and let me use red so I'm a little bit more consistent, and the right over here. Now, superior means above or towards the top, so anything that is more up is superior and anything that is more down is inferior. So anything below along this axis is superior or inferior. Now, if I were to do a side view of a person, that's also easy to indicate, right? It's still superior going up and inferior going down all along that axis. Now, another term we wanna use is something called the midline. So the midline is a term that we sometimes refer to and it refers to imaginary line that goes down, splits the person in half between equal left and right sides and kind of goes right over the belly. So this down here is someone's midline, okay? So midline is imaginary line that divides the body into equal parts. And then we'll use this term to say something that's medial. So something that's medial is something that is closer to the midline compared to something that's further from the midline. It doesn't have to be on the midline. It just has to be closer to the midline than something that's not. So this is kind of the line you would draw for midline. And anything that's closer to the midline is what we call medial. And anything that's further from it is lateral. Okay? We're going to usually use these terms referring to your trunk your, and your head, your head and your torso. We actually don't really like to use these terms when referring to your arms and legs because even though this person is in the anatomical position, so theoretically you can give, you can say, oh, the elbow is medial to the thumbs. Because this person can kind of swish their arm and cross it over their chest, it's just not a great term to use, but we have a different unique set of terms that we use specifically for arms and legs. But we like to use medial and lateral more for uh, the, the torso and the head, things you can't, you can't move around or flail around. Next, we have a term that's kind of hard to refer to in this diagram. It's called and it's anterior, posterior, and the second set of terms called ventral and dorsal. Okay, these refer to the front side and the back side. So I'm going to instead flip to the side view of a person here. So this is the front side of a person, and this is the back side of the person. I'm just going to draw a little bud here. Okay, so that's the back side of the person. All right, so in this case, anterior is where, the, where your body, especially in the anatomical position, is eyes forward, right? So anterior is over here, and posterior is on the other side of your eyes. So posterior is over here. You can also use your butt as a reference. But here's something um, interesting. Um, 
ventral and dorsal are special terms that are going to act differently in organisms that have four legs. So just be aware of that. So I'm going to put a little star next to it because they will act differently later on. But in this case, ventral means belly and dorsal means spine. So that's going to actually face a different direction on a four-legged person. But the person's belly on a human is on their anterior side. So it's also no, so the same direction here for anterior is also the same direction for ventral. So if you're facing forward, any organ that is more towards the side that's facing forward is anterior or ventral in human. And any or anything that's facing away from the front, so towards the back side, more towards the back, is called posterior. So going this way, and it could be, we can use posterior or we can use the term dorsal. And these are both acceptable terms in a human. Okay? So in this case, a classic example is my chest is anterior to my spine. Or my chest is on the ventral, is more ventral compared to my spinal cord. My, my, uh, my butt cheeks, right, is, is posterior or dorsal to my stomach. Okay? These are all ways we can use the term. All right, so this is sort of a drawn version of the picture I did uh, earlier. Um, personally speaking, I'm not a, I don't like this, the dash images to kind of indicate that's towards the back side, but it's, it's not really clearly indicated here. So having that side drawing of a person is going to really help you make sure you identify or um, know what you're referring to. Okay, so just a heads up. All right, um, another trick to remembering dorsal, a lot of people know what a dorsal fin is, which is a fin on the back side of an animal, so maybe that'll help you remember that dorsal is on the back, because a dorsal fin on a, on a dolphin is on its back. All right, let's do some other terms. So we have um, distal, proximal, deep, superficial, intermediate, caudal, crania, and cephalic, so let's go over that. All right, so that's my terrible drawing of humans, so let's go over it. So distal and proximal actually refer to your arms and legs only. So it's only used for your appendages or an extremity. Anything sticking out, um, you could use on your ears. Uh, you can use them on some reproductive organs that might be sticking out of your torso. But you mainly, we primarily use it for your arms and your legs. Okay, so in this case here, you have the point of attachment that's closer to where your torso or trunk is. Trunk refers to your torso and pelvis area. So the point of attachment is what we call the proximal region. So anything that's closer to where it attaches to your body is your proximal area along your arm or leg. Anything that's closer to your foot or your hand further away from the attachment point of your body is called your distal region. And again, these are comparison terms. So let's take your knee, for example. Your knee is distal to your thigh. It's further away from your body than your thigh to your, compared to your thigh, but it's more proximal to your torso and pelvis than your foot. So your knee is proximal to your foot and distal to your thigh. Okay. So superficial and deep are kind of hard to draw on this, but basically, if you get like kind of a shallow scrape, that's a superficial cut. And if it's deep, you, you kind of got stabbed or something, then that's deep, okay? So deep <laughs> versus superficial. This is kind of terrible to draw on a cartoon dude, okay? So um, I actually think it's a little bit better to just sort of sketch it out. So let's say this is skin, all right? So skin surface, okay? So then something that's deep is g deep would be something that goes deep under your skin or more below the surface of your skin. And something that's superficial is going to be a little bit just little doesn't go as far in as on the skin surface. So that's what deep and superficial mean. So, for example, um, my skin is definitely more superficial to my bones. It's much closer to the surface than my bones. My... Um, my fat in under my skin is still superficial compared to my bones, but my muscles um, are more superficial than my bones, or I could say my bones are deeper than my muscles, okay? 
something like that. Okay, intermediate is used in reference to two objects. So, for example, in this case, let's say you have your, this one's kind of hard to draw, but let's say we have our lungs here. That's terrible lungs. Then your heart is intermediate. Okay, your nose in, in, is intermediate to your eyes, so it's between your eyes. So that's kind of silly. So I'm going to erase the intermediate thing because I don't think I need to illustrate it. But that's just one way to show it. Actually, I'll just leave it there. All right, the last big term we're going to go over is caudal or cranial. Um, I ran out of color, so I'm going to use green over here. Caudal and cranial. Um, so caudal means towards your tail end. So for a human, their tail end kind of ends at their butt. And the line for caudal and cranial is a line drawn between where the tailbone is and where the head is. So the caudal line is actually only from here to wherever your tailbone is. And because our tailbone doesn't go below this point over here, we're not going to get any lower than that. So caudal in this case will only refer to the plane line between your head and your and your tailbone. So this is actually in a human really close to using the term anterior or not anterior, sorry, superior and inferior. But the main difference here is you can't get inferior to your tailbone. It doesn't go below that. So this term is kind of odd and weird. So it's rarely used in humans. We might use cephalic or cranial because it's like everyone has a head and it's clearly easy to find where towards your head is or your superior region is. But it's actually more used in animals because their if you draw a if you look at your dog or cat if you have one and you draw a line from their head to your tail, you create this line that goes straight across their body. So it's not a term super used on humans. So this is kind of a more formal uh, image of these different terms. So cranial and cephalic is kind of used, at least in humans, interchangeably with superior because it's still along the same axes from your head to bottom, except caudal ends at tailbone, as opposed to inferior, which can go all the way down the same axis from your head all the way down to your toes. Okay. Now, there's also, in addition to terms referring to the body, terms that refer to the position the body is in that is used in medicine. I'm not going to really go over that many. I just want you to be aware that these terms are real terms. However, um, I think two terms are going to be helpful to know, especially if in your class you end up learning a little bit about COVID, and that's the terms prone and supine. These are really common positions used in medicine. So prone is when you're face down. So this person is face down. All right. And supine is when you're lying on your back and you're facing and your face is facing, you know, up. Okay. So just a heads up. These are terms that might come up in the future. So it, a way to think of it is um, when you're prone, you're exposed and you can't defend yourself. So when you're face down, you can't see what's coming at you. So that might help you remember the term. All right, common mistakes that get made in directional terms. A lot of students think medial is the same thing as intermediate. They are not the same thing. So medial specifically refers to the midline, to the middle line that separates your body, okay? On the other hand, intermediate means between two parts of your body. So it could be way away from the midline and still count as intermediate. So like you know your hand, your your ring finger is intermediate of your index and your pinky because it's between your index and your pinky. So that would count as intermediate, even though it's not necessarily more midline, okay, to, want, to both of those things. So intermediate, just be aware, is not the same thing. Last but not least, because the ventral dorsal, caudal, cephalic, distal, and proximal refer to the position relative to a specific part of the body, your head, trunk, tail, belly, or back, students tend to mix them up. They tend to act like proximal and distal are the same thing as 
superior and inferior, and they're not, okay? They specifically refer to the trunk, so, um, or position as what's closer to your torso, what's closer to your pelvic region. So just be careful. And this becomes doubly important when we talk about animals. So why would we even bother talking about animals? Well, it's because in anatomy, oftentimes on your way to becoming a professional, you dissect animals because they, they share a lot of organs in common with the human. However, the positioning of those organs are different than compared to on a human. So you want to be familiar with these terms because a lot of your dissection terminology specifically goes towards the posterior sides, toward the anterior side, and they're going to be different on an animal. Okay, something to be aware of is some terms, particularly terms that are dependent on the position relative to body parts, that ends up making these terms different between when they're applied to humans versus when they're applied to four-legged animals. Now, this is significant for anatomy because with anatomy, especially before you go into a medical program, many of our dissections are in four-legged animals. So in that case, the directions and terms are referred to in your dissections instructions are slightly different to what you would anticipate if you're projecting it on a human body, okay? So let's go over these terms that can be a little bit tricky. So first, we're going to go over the terms that are relatively straightforward. So let's say superior, inferior. Superior is above, inferior below. So if we're talking the access for superior, inferior, then those are basically the same for both the human and the doggo. In this case, superior is anything more above any, <laughs> anything below, and inferior is anything lower than whatever's on top of it. That's it, pretty straightforward. And anterior posterior is where you're facing forward. So I put the human and the dog facing in opposite directions because it's not a left-right thing. It's just where their eyes are facing. And there's a human eyes. Okay, so let's say we're along that axis. This and this. And along this axis for the doggo. So for the human facing forward, anything that's more towards where they're where they're facing, this would be anterior, and anything more behind wherever they're facing, that would be posterior, okay? And for the doggo, because their eyes is going this way, then that makes this, this direction anterior and this direction posterior. Pretty straightforward. But now let's go to ventral dorsal. So if we look at ventral dorsal, it's relative to your backbone and your belly. So for a human, their belly is on this side and their backs or spine is on this side, which means the direction or the arrow that kind of is along the same axis is the posterior anterior arrow, which means the belly side is the anterior side more towards the front where your belly is and the posterior side is also similar to the dorsal side. So for a human, posterior and dorsal can be used interchangeably Anterior and ventral can be used interchangeably. But for the dog, if you look at its body, its belly is facing the ground and its back is above that, which means its ventral dorsal line is along the superior inferior axis, which means that the term dorsal is more of the is more used interchangeably with the word superior and the term ventral is used interchangeably with the word inferior, which is very different. Now, looking at the word cranial caudal, cranial caudal is actually more the most accurate term used for a four-legged animal because their, their tail is all the way at the end of their body and their head is all the way at the front of their body. So this is definitely along the anterior-posterior axis with caudal being similar to the term posterior and cranial or cephalic being similar to the term anterior. But on the other hand, for the human, their tailbone ends here. That's their caudal. So their line for caudal kind of ends at their butt. And you wouldn't really want to use that term for anything below the tailbone. But you could use the word cranial or cephalic as a similar word as superior. 
but you wouldn't you wouldn't use caudal for anything below that, like your foot compared to your chest or anything like that. But now you can see these terms, ventral dorsal cranial caudal, very different directions for the dog versus the human. Okay? So this is just another projection of it. And again, these even though I wrote the word, you can see the line. So the imaginary axis is a lot is basically between the two like ter or the two opposite terms for anything. So this is the imaginary axis for all these terms in terms of their direction. Okay. So, anyways, hopefully that gives you a better idea of how these terms are applied between a human and a dog. Okay, so this is an image of those typical axes lines you would use. By the way, proximal and distal, again, is only for the limbs. I know it might be tempting, for instance, if you're comparing your belly button to your foot to say the belly button is more proximal than the foot, but you can't use it because the term proximal means close to the torso, but the belly button is part of the torso, which means you can't use that word. So just a heads up. If I want to compare the belly button to the foot, I might use the word uh, uh, superior versus inferior, okay? So what I want to remind you is directional terms are comparison terms. So all these terms we just used, they don't really work unless you're comparing one part of the body of an organism to a different part of its body, okay? So I wanted you to try is to go over these different examples and make some guesses on what you think the answer will be. Then I'm going to go over them. Okay? So try them for all of these. A lot of the terms may have more than one thing, one word that would count. For example, if you're trying to do above, you might, in a human, use the word cephalic, cranial, uh, superior. So a lot of these words are interchangeable. So just keep that in mind. When I give you two blanks, what I typically mean is along two different types of axes. You want to think of possible terms that could count. Okay? So pause, make some guesses, and I'll go over the answers. All right. So I'm going to go over the answers. Okay. So these are some typical answers. So belly is in front of the lower back, ventral anterior. The elbow is is proximal to the hand. So in this case, because the elbow and hand are along the same limb, the arm, then it's more appropriate to use the term proximal rather than superior. In fact, because I didn't differentiate right arm or left arm, I could mean the left elbow is proximal to the right hand because even though they're not along, the, they're not like directly on top of each other, I definitely know my elbow is closer to my torso than my hand. So just be aware of that. The elbow is intermediate to the bicep and forearm. The nose is medial to the right cheek. Um, it's because it's right between, or it's closer to the midline than the right cheek. And just a heads up, medial just means closer to the center. It doesn't mean dead on the center. So you could say the right cheek is medial to the right ear, and that would also be appropriate. The left eye is above your nose, right? And it's off to the side from your nose. So you could use superior cephalic cranial for the above term and lateral for off to the side. I also realize your eye, your nose is more forward than your eye. So you could also use superior dorsal if you wanted to for one of these terms. The skeletal bone is deeper than the skin because I didn't specify the bone. I didn't specify the skin. So your skin's covering the, your entire body and your bone is inside all of your body. So deep is the most appropriate term here. The neck is below your mouth, so inferior caudal would work. And again, we're not below the tailbone, so caudal works here. And the neck is medial and superior cephalic or cranial to the shoulders, and that all works. So the neck is in the middle of your shoulders and above. I guess because it's, it's more towards the midline, so medial means more towards the midline, but it's also between your shoulders. So I guess intermediate would also work but heads up, intermediate means between. It doesn't mean midline, so just be aware of that. But it just happens to be the neck is both more towards the midline and in between your shoulders. Okay, um, key takeaways. Remember, a lot of these terms, especially when it comes to the vertical position, we're referring to the anatomical position. 
when you're standing with your feet ajar and your thumbs hooking out like that. Um, many terms that you use can have to be used to um, provide some common language between health professionals and we are using them as comparison terms between two or more body parts. And we need to be careful when we're referring to humans versus four-legged animals because some of the terms refer to body parts, which means they're in slightly different axes along a human versus a four-legged animal. All right, good luck. Move on to any other work. Bye.